Estamos na Conferência de Ciências Comportamentais e Educação Investidor com o professor Dr. Werner de Bond. Ele é PhD, professor de Finanças e diretor fundador do J. Howe Center for Behavior Finance, da Boa University, Chicago, e um dos instituidores do campo das finanças comportamentais. Hello. Hi. First question. The financial markets is studying behavior finance in order to nudge the investor and profit more. Is it feasible for the rec for the regulator to apply behavior finance to protect the investors? Uh, you're asking whether it is feasible for uh, financial regulators to protect investors. Yeah, using um, behavior insights. Uh, absolutely. But, um, you know, as I said this morning, we have to be uh, cautious uh, in what we argue. We don't want to oversell uh, because that only leads to trouble. Huh? I mean, people in the financial industry know that very well, that if you promise a lot, you get a lot of customers, but then they become unhappy. And I think with regulators, maybe it's the same thing. We want to, we can help people, but we have to be careful in what we claim we can do and what we can't do. Now, on the other hand, um, financial capability is so low. I mean, let's be frank about it. And this is a problem around the world that um, even minor interventions, we can think, will be useful. Uh, what I am warning against, perhaps, is uh, too much of a good thing. <laughs> but obviously, uh, when you start from zero, there's a lot of upward potential. No, there's, so there are many things we can do. When, where there is perhaps a problem is that, in a way, it has to be personalized. What I spoke about this morning is that many people suffer from overconfidence. They can do it all. But actually, there's also a large group of investors who are just scared of everything, and they lack any kind of confidence. So it has to be personalized. That's not easy to do. You see, here you already see a difficulty. Overconfidence is widespread and generally useful to try to fight that. But uh, then there will be many people. I actually, I mean, let me... Let me illustrate that. I did a study of semi-affluent investors in, in, in Europe. Um, and uh, we uh, recruited people in six countries, some Mediterranean countries, then more northern European countries like Belgium and Germany, and then Britain. We found that as you got closer to the Mediterranean, people were more nervous, uh, more fearful, for, and more reluctant, for instance, to go into stocks. Uh, uh, in Germany and Belgium, they were much more willing to do that. Britain was not a different country. It was a different planet. It's an altogether different, different attitude towards uh, financial markets, risk-taking, and so on, and so on. And do you think that uh, more information is always better, especially more information to small investors or professional traders? No, more information is not always better. There is often a data overload, and that actually scares people. If you drown people of information, then the tendency is either to do nothing, I can only do things wrong here, or to go with the consensus, or to stay with the status quo. You know, I better don't touch it. Um, so... Uh, so it is not generally true that more information is better, even though, in general, more information is better. But it's not always like that. I can certainly make a problem looking so complex and give you so much information that you just run away from it and say, oh, I can't handle that. But that could be good for the financial industry in the sense that they say, I need an advisor. <laughs> In your opinion, is it possible to say which would be the best practice for financial regulators to protect investors that, who are assumed to be naive, rationally bounded? Is, I didn't quite get that question. I, oh. Is it, I mean, investors are, in large majority, quite naive have problems of, with what they know, also what they can execute. You know, uh, half of America is trying to lose weight. The other half is trying to stop smoking. The third half is trying to pay off their credit cards, and the fourth half is trying to, um, you know, save more for retirement. Very often, people know that they're doing 
things the wrong way and still can bring themselves to do the right thing. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's quite complicated. It's an issue of uh, bounded rationality, as you say, uh, mistaken, wrong beliefs and terrible choices. But it's also a matter of willpower. It's also a matter of whether people are present or future-oriented. You know, financial planning is such a high ideal. But when I look at investors' portfolios, the easiest way to understand them is in terms of people's history. Okay, so I got this home because I lived, let's say, in California, and that's why I have it. And I got this stock years ago because my neighbor recommended it, and then it went down and I didn't have the courage to sell it. And, and so this is very different from the economist's approach who compares future costs to future benefits. In fact, many people hardly ever look at the future. And, and, sort of, and, and then one day they find that they're going to retire. <laughs> or they find that a couple of years before they retire, but they find it very late. And, and, and then they suddenly have to think, they're kind of forced to think about the future. Um, so... I hope that that partially answers your question here. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for your participation. All right. Thank you. Thank you.